Hi everyone, welcome to Unveiling Islam. I'm David Wood here with Brother Rashid. We're gonna be taking you through some of the most important issues uh, dealing with Islam from a Christian perspective. We want to help Christians uh, be able to interact with their Muslim friends more effectively. Now, before we actually get into some of the topics in this series, I think it'd be good to get a little background because you're one of the first guys I heard about back when I was getting started dealing with uh, apologetics. We heard back then we heard about Brother Rashid and Zachariah Boutros. Yes. And they were used as, an, as examples by Arab Christians because normal Christians in America were saying, hey, whatever you do, don't criticize Islam because True. you're just gonna hurt Muslims' feelings and they're never going to talk to you. Yeah. And Arab Christians were saying, no, look at how effective the Arab Christians are when they're dealing with Islam. And so you're one of the guys that I heard about, so I think it'd be a good start to get uh, some of your background. If I recall correctly, you grew up as a Muslim, is that right? Yeah, right, uh, thank you, David. And um, yes, I grew up in Morocco. Morocco is 99.99% Muslim, so I grew up in a Muslim family. My dad was an imam for a local mosque. I didn't have any clue about Christianity. I didn't know the Bible any of that. So one day I was listening to a radio program and then I heard the story of Jesus according to the gospel and I was really um, shocked because the first time to hear something that contradicts what I learned from my dad and from all the, the books that we had and that led me to four years of correspondence courses then making a decision. Uh, of course, a lot of topics came through and a lot of comparing the Quran to the Bible. And at the end, I ended up giving my life to Jesus Christ. That's a really like a very brief summary. So this was uh, a, a lot of Muslims tend to struggle with things a lot more. They don't seem kind of that open. So w was there some difference? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was a lot open. Of become, a lot <laughs> of people become hostile and or, I was. Or, or, or never examine it at all. And so I'm just, so you're, you're, you're by yourself and you heard radio show. Yes. And then you do, you start doing some courses and so on. And yeah. well, I remember back in the days we didn't have these, so uh, oh, the, the, the only thing that I had is my radio. And then tuning in and listening to that program, and then taking the address and writing a letter and waiting, emails didn't exist, so things are, are changed now. So you wait after weeks and you read response and you write back, and remember, we have censorship about anything Christian in Morocco, so even Bibles that couldn't come through. They kept trying several times until I got one copy with a warning from the mailman to my uncle. So it, it, it was not that easy. Also, I was hostile to the people. I wasn't really at the beginning trying to seek to understand. I, I send them um, curses and I send them even insults at the end of the letter. That's a, a very common reaction for a Muslim when he feels he's frustrated. Now, of course, there are always exceptions, but that was common in my culture that if you get frustrated and you can't answer some questions, you just like start yelling or insulting or cursing. And so, you, but you, you continued per pursuing this, and th that's interesting. Is that also cultural, like you're gonna keep coming at something, or is that, is that like you? Well, I came to a conclusion that I, d I don't know anything. Mm. So, w w I, at least I should have some basic knowledge about Christianity. How come I'm responding, all my quotes are from the Quran. All of them are verses from the Quran. And I know nothing about the Bible or like, Christian doctrines. And they are telling me, like, put the Quran aside. Let's discuss what the Bible says. And that's when I got confused because I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I don't know about the Bible. I need to understand first so I can have a better understanding. 
That's that's an interesting perspective because I don't know about you, but I find lots of people want to talk about Christianity and the Bible and have no clue what they're talking about. Most Muslims don't, don't actually. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's, that's what I'm referring to. I mean, it's true of lots, lots of atheists and so on, but uh, yeah, lots of Muslims tell me all about Jesus and the Bible and really have no clue what they're talking about. So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting when someone says, hey, I'm actually going to learn what I'm talking about here. And then, then when I started looking deeply, some, some things I took them for granted. Of course, Jesus was not crucified. Of course, he's not divine. Of course, the Bible changed. Of course. So you just take them for granted as, as facts. Mm -hmm. You, we never verified them. So when it came time to start digging, I was shocked that we don't have really uh, a solid ground as Muslims for our worldview about Christianity. So things started falling apart. E each thing I, I examine, I find it's so weak. The arguments are so weak and I can't back, uh, back up my arguments against them. So every time they respond, I'm, I'm I don't know. I go to commentaries about the Quran and they, they, don't, they don't help me. Actually, sometimes they make it even worse. And, and, and that's when I started picking certain topics so I can make a decision because I was lost. And remember, I was around 16 as a teen and I'm struggling spiritually with, with this. And sometimes it was really deep and frustrating. I stay up until four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, just crying and putting the Bible and the Quran in front of me and asking God to help me because it was so overwhelming, so, so um, heartbreaking too, when you get to know that the religion you grow up in, your dad, your family is not really, they are not really following the truth. So it's, it's shocking. You have no no ground to trust. Everything becomes fluid around you. You have no, it's, it, everything you grow up believing as truth is not anymore the truth. Yeah, so, and th there's a, you're saying this and there's a lot, there's a lot of important things going on. So uh, one, you actually wanted to know the truth and yeah. you were willing to pursue it. Uh, two, you're actually looking at the arguments and not just accepting whatever, you know, response or explanation is given. You're examining this material critically and saying, is this actually correct? Yes. And you're looking at it going, this, this, this actually doesn't, doesn't seem correct. And then, uh, you know, three, you're actually concerned with other people, yeah. with other people uh, around you. So you, you eventually became a Christian and uh, a lot of people would want to know, you know, you're in Morocco. Yeah. What's, what's the reaction? Do you, do you keep it secret? Do you tell people or? Well, I kept it secret for a while, and I didn't know that um, church, underground church exists already for, for Muslims who became Christians. But a missionary got my address from that station, and then he contacted me, introduced me to those believers, and we became like a family. Then when my family noticed that my my friends are, are not anymore the same. My habits are not anymore the same. I find, I find um, excuses several times to not to go to the mosque and trying to escape all religious duties. And the, some of my cousins told my family, especially my mom, that I am not anymore a Muslim, which was so insulting for her. She wanted to prove them wrong. So she gathered the family one day and then they asked me the, the question, are you a Muslim or a Christian? And I had to face it. I had to make a decision that day. They even gave me the option. They say, you don't have to answer that. When I try to avoid it, I say, that's between me and God. They say, Which is pretty much an answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And then they, they, she said, just say the Shahada and prove that everybody is wrong and that's it. We'll let you go. And I was hesitating for a few seconds, and then I said, Mom, I can't say it. And that's actually like you are renouncing your Islamic faith. And that took me to um, two years of being homeless, um, uh, rejected by all family members. Nobody wants me in their homes. And then uh, I ended up um, living a little bit with that missionary who introduced me to Moroccan Christians, and then growing in my faith with 
the Moroccan church underground. Of course, um, police was following us. We had raids for several meetings. Uh, we got interrogated. Some of us were even put into jail for a few days or, or more. And it was a lot of fear, a lot of um, uncertainty, a lot of uh, moving parts, mm -hmm. you can call it. And then um, I was exposed one day to, um, to uh, media, uh, uh, newspapers. Uh, some of, some of um, the journalists uh, just wrote a story about me. And I, I became in danger, actually, not just interrogated by police. And that's when I had to leave the country and got involved in uh, explaining Islam and comparing Islam to Christianity to my uh, Muslim friends and family. And uh, here we are all these years later, and it, it turns out it's actually much easier to do nowadays. Back then, you're talking about uh, hearing it on the radio and then doing correspondence, writing back and forth. And now we are uh, just in some exciting times, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, now, I mean, y y any Christian watching this can talk to a Muslim in Morocco, uh, you know, on his phone on social media, uh, we have YouTube, we have so many opportunities right now. And so that's why we want to uh, help equip everyone out there to look and find people like you when you were younger and be able to show the same things that you saw. And yeah. ladies and gentlemen, uh, in this series, we're gonna take you through all the issues that are relevant for having these discussions with your Muslim friends. And I believe we're gonna see more Muslims come to Christ in our lifetimes than all previous generations Amen combined. to that. Thank you.